the world famous NASA Kennedy oh, Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Our first time visiting. Here we are at the rocket garden. Most of these rockets are real, but they never launched. Do you have to remember back then, they didn't recycle rockets once they were launched. This is us in a mock up Apollo capsule. Can you imagine being hurled into space in the mid 60s in one of these? I don't fit, babe. <laughs> Neil Armstrong was 5'11. You're kind of on the taller side. I can slouch. <laughs> Here we are in front of the International Space Station mural. And dancing Tom Hanks style, of course. Then we had our minds blown watching a space movie in IMAX. Oh my goodness. I imagine this is Mari's slow-mo movie strut on the way to board a shuttle. Oh yeah, and I'd have like epic music and like all these kids and like a dog waving goodbye at me. What? Oh yeah, the movie dead. Like a dog? Like waving? Yeah, it's like crying and it's waving and it would lick the camera, <laughs> just like that. Hey. We spent the majority of the day in this exhibit just simply in awe of the size and capacity of the shuttle Atlantis. Yeah, it was vital in carrying big, giant pieces of equipment to assemble the ISS, aka the International Space Station, and the Hubble Telescope, which are both still prominently used today. Any like really gorgeous, ornate, beautiful photo that you see of outer space probably comes from the Hubble Telescope. <laughs> We kicked our shoes off and scrambled through a tiny replica of the ISS. You say tiny replica, but we both know this is a kid's playset. Sands the ball pit. Oh man, I could have used some microgravity for my knees though. If this is a kid's playset, um, shouldn't we be worried about crawling through a glass tunnel? That glass tunnel? This is why we need microgravity. Speaking of the ISS, one of my favorite facts about it is that it's a collaborative effort between countries from around the world. Cultural differences are just not enough to keep you from working with each other when you're fighting to survive in the vacuum of space. The US, Japan, Canada, Russia, and Europe all work in sync for the sake of science and space and exploration. We re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, landed squarely back on Earth. Gotta get to the store. And you instantly gravitated towards shopping. The girls got priorities. Get that was the Atlantis experience. It was pretty cool. Oh, this is awesome. Coming here made me think about being really excited about space when I was a kid. It sort of transports you back to a time and place where it's really magical and I felt that today. I may have missed out on space camp when I was a kid, but seeing all this as an adult makes probably an even bigger impact on me. The airport, we gotta go. We are just leaving the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex and uh, Mari oh, seems convinced. Look at the sunset, it's so pretty. It is crazy that now I, I feel like I'm more a part of the space movement than I ever thought I would be when I was growing up. I would always look up at the night sky and wonder about where we came from. I, I kind of figured that it might be wasting my time by asking that question, but now I actually feel encouraged to ask because the further we manage to push out into space as a species, the more we learn about ourselves and our story. I get chills like thinking about it. We made it. Is it still going? Yeah. <gasps> wow, okay. <laughs> I mean, we've made it to the rental, but we don't know if we've made it to the no, flight that's yet. True. We have We have 10 minutes till we board, so might as well work out for a few minutes. Leg day, so uh, seven minutes of hell. Here we go. Okay, that, that was a long day. Yeah, but we are absolute pros at getting on a flight. Did we sleep on this flight? I think you you did. I usually fall asleep before the takeoff. Are, are you all dressed up? Because it's going to be cold. We were just in Florida where it's nice and warm and now it's freezing. In the morning, we met with the Planetary Society to prepare for meetings with members of Congress. Uh, we have a briefing at NASA headquarters tomorrow. Space nerds trying to get more money for NASA. Moon or Mars, friends, it is both. You see the flag, 
but it's like whipping. Windy. Honestly, we were both pretty nervous. Neither neither one of us had ever done anything like this. Yes, seriously. Like, I mean, who, who are we? Just a, a couple of space fans who are here in DC talking to members of Congress who have a real say in what happens with the government. Yeah, it's really inspiring to experience this and to be reminded that our voices matter and that we as US Americans have the ability, the right to exercise that privilege. Props to Planetary Society for streamlining the day though, because I mean, they, they prepared us with all the essential materials, all the talking points, and they, they just set us up to geek out about space in our meetings. This whole Capitol Hill process can be intimidating, but we're proof that you can do it too. Oh, oh, okay, there's an entire subterranean labyrinth hidden underneath the most important government buildings in DC that are connected by this pseudo secret railway system, dubbed the shortest and most exclusive railway in the world. Thank you, Antonio, appreciate it. Antonio was our assigned photographer and impromptu next level tour guide, tasked with the responsibility of helping us get to our next meeting on time. With just a few minutes to spare, Antonio was presented with the choice. Take us to our meeting through the typical front entrance of the Capitol or through a secret pathway through the bowels of this historic structure. He chose the path less traveled and Mara and I were treated to a pretty rare look at the maze of hallways under the Capitol which we didn't even know existed. There was original foundation. There was this like diner that looked like it was from the 50s. It reminded me of Umbrella Academy, actually. It made me think of in the new Indiana Jones. Oh, where are the crystal skulls? Thought for a moment we attracted the attention of an undercover security guard. Yeah, that guard. guy. <laughs> Before we knew it. Okay, stop recording. And we just popped out. Oh my gosh, it's like coming up for air. The long winding path, it was worth it. So it might not have been a shortcut, but I'll remember that experience for the rest of my life. We managed to avoid knocking over any statues and scratching any paintings and Antonio got us to our destination. A meeting with one of Nancy Pelosi's trusted advisors. What a trip. I can't do that babe, we're in a serious place. I mean, this is not a normal experience, right? What, what is normal? That's, that's very true. I can't express how grateful I am to be able to experience this and have a tour of this place. And I, yeah, I'm so grateful that we got to experience this together and feel like we're part of National Treasure, yeah. one of the best movies out there. What? <laughs> it's great. Nick Cage is like my hero. <sighs> we made it to our meeting in one piece. We made it. We kind of killed it, I think. I hope so. I, I hope so too. There was a lot resting on us. Uh, Shout out to Antonio for <laughs> hooking, this, uh, hooking this up. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure Obama stand, stood here before. Oh yeah, for sure. I wanna see this place after hours. We got to finish the day with a photo shoot with the rest of the Planetary Society volunteers. A huge and special thanks to Andrew Polly and Casey Dreyer for making this trip even possible for us. <gasps> it's you! And everybody else at Planetary Society that volunteered. Andrew! Aww, and one last little time lapse. But uh, I, I honestly already can't wait to go back next year. And uh, you know, maybe it'll be warmer. Hey, I'll have my trusty Uniqlo jacket. I love that thing. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. Deep thoughts here. We have some really deep thoughts in a second. You, you, have, to, you, have, to, you have to hold on, wait, wait for it. This is a good question, but, but we edited some of these cards. Just a few. Just hold up, stay with me. It's gonna, it's happening. Think about it guys, every time you paint a room, the room gets microscopically smaller. 
Babe, do you think about that? My mind is absolute putty thinking of thinking about it. It's absolutely blown. I feel claustrophobic. We sh we should never paint our room. 